Whether we are there or not, ITSP Magazine still gets the best stories. Plenty of conferences and events spark our curiosity and allow us to start conversations with some of the world's brightest minds. In person or virtually, Sean Martin and Marco Cipelli go on location and sit down with them at the intersection of technology, cybersecurity, and society. Together, we discover what the synergy of these three elements means for the future of humanity. Marco. Sean. We are uh, spending a lot of time in the car together, virtually. In, in the virtual car together this time. <laughs> and it's a, it's a long drive across the, uh, across the states. Well, you know, the people York. that follow me and my podcast, I may have mentioned a few times that I spent some time in Atlanta and I did drive there and then I drove back to LA. So, hey, it's another drive cross country. What's, what's the big there deal? We, we can go to New York City. Of course, I love New York City. And, you could uh, be already there. I, I never know where you are. You never know where I'm going to be. <laughs> I might be there now. I might be there now. People can do the low ascent to figure out where I am. But uh, where I will be and where you should be, everybody listening, is uh, Cybertech New York City, September 5th. And I guess there's some stuff on the 4th as well, which we'll get into. And... Uh, a great event happening at the Metropolitan Pavilion in Chelsea, a cool spot, part of the city there. And I'm thrilled to have Steve Cork on. Steve, how are you? I'm very good. How are you? Doing great. Doing great. And you, you have the pleasure of organizing this event in New York City. It's part of, part of a global um, series of events that your team does. And uh, I think you're, as a director, you're responsible for this in North America. So we're going to talk about the event, who's going to be there, what's going on, a little bit about, uh, about what people can expect. But before we do that, maybe a little bit more about your role and the broader uh, cyber tech uh, group and everything that the team does globally. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm great to be here and thank you. Um, yeah, so cyber tech New York is part of a global suite of events that started about uh, 10 years ago in Tel Aviv, which uh, you know, has a strong base of uh, all things cyber. Um, the event there now, just to give some sort of background, the event there um, is now up to about 20,000 people and is a, is a primary event for the cyber, cyber tech community globally. Uh, the team then a few years later uh, launched it, um, a marquee event in Italy, in Rome, for the European market. And that now is one of the preeminent um, cyber tech events for the European market. And at different times in different places around the world, we've had cyber tech as far afield as Rwanda in Africa, in Panama, in Central America, and other locations, even in Indiana, uh, here in the US, and, and different locations. Um, part of the reason for that is that, um, and I'll come on to the US part of it in a second, but part of the reason for that is and uh, something perhaps pursuant to this conversation for New York, is that there's a lot of localities, be they cities or states, who very much want an event like this um, in their neighborhood, as it really highlights and helps augment um, the cyber ecosystem, which is uh, part of the big part of the tech ecosystem, of course. But that brings with it uh, spotlight, it brings with it investment, um, shines a light on the ecosystem, the ecosystem, uh, being defined as everything from talent to universities uh, to the, the whole infrastructure that supports um, something like cyber tech. And um, over the last few years, and quite a while, of course, um, New York has become such a hub for all things tech, and particularly cyber. Uh, there's a lot of things going on here from established uh, companies, from um, the Googles and the Amazons and all the other companies who that touch into cyber and AI, of course, as, it, as, it, as that's growing to the many startups, um, domestic startups, uh, overseas startups, some of which still land um, in my old neighborhood of um, Palo Alto and other places, but me increasingly many of them land here in New York uh, and then start that journey of growing, um, of perhaps being acquired at some point or going public, whatever that looks like. Um, so Cybertech New York specifically, this is the third time we've done the um, the event in New York. We started it a few years ago in the middle of COVID when people were telling us we were kind of crazy to do a live event in 
2021. Uh, but we did it um, over at the Glass House, uh, over there by the Intrepid, for those of you that know New York. Um, and then we did a another edition at the Jacob Javits Center and decided this year to go with the Metropolitan. We like the, the cool the vibe there. It's a good location in Chelsea. It's close to a lot of that sort of startup action down towards Hudson Yards and other places. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're really excited to be back in New York. Um, happy to be here to shine a light on I am a New Yorker, despite my dulcet tones. Um, uh, very much happy to shine a light on everything that New York has, and very much uh, happy to have the support of the city, the Economic Development Corporation, because we're very much about promoting New York as a center of cyber excellence. Well, that so, sounds uh, interesting. I definitely want to know more about the Rome one, because being Italian, um, I may be interested in getting an excuse just to go back <laughs> even yeah. one more, but this is not what we're going to do today. Uh, hopefully, we will get to talk to you guys about other events in other parts of the world. So tell me a little bit more about uh, the focus of this event. I mean, there is many cybersecurity event conference in the world. Some are a little bit more technical, more training. Uh, hands-on and other are maybe again for VC and, and displaying more of a business side of things. So um, does this uh, event qualify for either one or the other or what makes it different? That's the point. Yeah, that, that's a great question, Marco, because um, we were calling this a special edition because we put this together quite quickly because we saw a need in the market to do something. But beyond that, um, Cybertech is a little different to the many, and there's many great cybersecurity events and cyber events that happen. Even in New York, there's probably one every week, if not every day. This is a little different to the extent that it doesn't speak just to the sort of traditional vendor uh, cell community, if you will. It's not just about, um, it is partly about this, I just want to make the point, but it's not just about a cyber, established cyber company selling their solutions to cybersecurity professionals. We very much welcome that, and that's part of what we do. But we tend to focus much more on the broader ecosystem, and that's that I would define as everything from, if I think about, for example, if I can start with our, our Cyber Talent Initiative. So the Cyber Talent Initiative that we've got in place, that will speak to everything from people who are already in cyber, perhaps looking to upskill their needs, all the way through to students, We've got a cyber challenge that's taking place with local boroughs and universities and schools involved. Um, so we start with the very, if you will, I wouldn't call it the bottom of the funnel, but we start with that level of the funnel of the, the people coming into the cyber market. We then have a focus on all things VC and investor related and private offices and so forth. And that we've got a program there that we ran around the world called Invest in the Best. And that's more for established startups looking to augment their funding and form other partnerships. And then we do speak to, um, as I would say, that traditional established cyber security or cyber tech vendor who's looking to meet with the chief information security officers and other security professionals. But then we also do bring in um, government and agencies and other uh, other stakeholders, if you will, in the ecosystem. We talk to cities about what makes a great ecosystem. So we'll have a, a panel on, for example, why is New York so successful and what, what are other cities doing to be successful? So we, we speak to cyber very holistically because we think cyber is everything in this day and age. So we speak to it on a very broad, but then we drop down into these very specific forms. So if you're coming just for talent, we can we have a program for you just for talent. If you're coming more for the uh, main, stage, main stage content, which this year I'm pleased to say is talking to topical stuff such as fake news and the role of um, cyber in elections. So I'm reliably informed we're going to have an election here in a couple of months. So um, all that kind of stuff that's topical and focused, sort of big picture stuff, if you will, that involves speakers from cyber, the head of cyber from coming from different parts of the world. Um, and so on. So, you know, we, 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 we take a broad stroke. We try and cram a lot in, as you'll see on the agenda and, and across a couple of stages, but we want to try and get everybody's, you know, we, we think the currency that we're being paid in, in many ways, in, in events, is with people's time. Yes, we're obviously we're for profit, don't get me wrong, but we value people's time and we want to get people as much return on their investment of time as possible. So I hope you like that. Gives yeah. you a flavor for it. 
Yeah, it certainly does. And I, I was looking at the program. I think you touched on all of them. There's invest in the best. Yeah. There's a identity think tank, cyber tech yes. talent, and yes. a special simulation. I don't know what yes. any of those. You, you touched on all those, I think. I, I didn't touch on the special simulation, but we'll be doing okay. that. Um, we also had something called um, EIS, which is a, a group that, uh, that exists already. We're partnering with them around electric infrastructure. We're taking a very, um, we tend to take um, a very partner agnostic view of the way we So I've worked in many events businesses, and there's no ideal recipe, but some, but some events are very proprietary. They only work internally with what they produce content wise and so forth. We take a view here that we can partner with a lot of people and uh, sometimes it's a straight partnership. Sometimes there's a little element of, uh, what do we call it? Co-opetition or frenemies, which is all fine. Uh, so for example, on our talent initiative, we partnered with a group called Tech Day, who does their own event every year for startups in the, in the Jam Center. Uh, for, for the electric uh, infrastructure initiative, we partnered with EIS. Um, they're a group that already exists. Um, so there's a, there's a range of things that we've brought to the table here that we think that, that are good for the market, good to be a partnership that we're wrapping up. But um, I think, yeah, you've got most of them. We also have a threat intelligence workshop. We have a number of things going on. And these might, you know, in the end be 20, 30, 40, 50 people in the room, but that's great as long as they're getting the information they want at that time along with all that sort of um, main stage content. Yeah, and what I like, I mean, I'm going through the uh, the brochure here, and there's it's a global global set of speakers. I mean, I see Ireland, Netherlands, uh, Israel, Bosnia, Bosnia, yeah, yeah lo loads of different places, and then a lot of large name brands. Uh, I see Walmart and AWS, and and who else did I see? Uh, I don't know, doesn't not necessarily Phillips. I think it was another one, but the, yeah. the uh, but then also some smaller orgs that are part of the conversation is that I think what I've heard in the last few months as I was talking to folks is there there's a lot of and I've seen some posts on LinkedIn as well that there's a lot of best practices from large organizations and those work for large organizations and to distill those down into smaller pieces that work for smaller orgs is just as critical. And yeah. so I love I love to see the uh, the different the different range of folks you have participating in these. And are they are they roundtables? Are they panels? Are they birds of a feather? T talk about the format. It's a, bit. <laughs> it's a mixture of all of those. It's yeah. a good question. The, the, the main stage obviously necessarily is the main stage, and it's panel based. But we have a lot of forums. I mean, we have the the identity forum, which is the night before the main the main event. That's more of a roundtable format. We have an area called quantum, which is much more about round tables. The whole invest in the best and um, so forth is much more of a, a round table format. But you're absolutely right to point to the fact that there's larger companies, smaller companies, and even some of the larger companies, you know, they're coming in with the set, perhaps sometimes a different angle. So for example, we've got a, a great uh, a woman coming in um, from, from uh, Snapchat. And um, and she's going to talk about her journey. Now she's uh, happens to be uh, a, you know, a woman from a minority, but she's going to talk to our talent attendees about that journey and what it was like to get there, um, and, and and to be inspired by things to get involved in cyber. We're trying to encourage those that, that want to, you know, particularly here in the New York area, to get involved in cyber as a potential career. That's very much part of our focus. But I, but I take your point very very well that. We see, you know, there's big company thinking and big company stuff, and then there's obviously the startups. But in, in between that as well, it's interesting because I, 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 I did a panel last week on entrepreneurship, and it shouldn't be lost on us that a lot of very innovative things are happening internally within the companies. And I'm sure you guys have all the examples from Gmail and Post-it notes, stuff that was invented by individuals within large corporations. So that's certainly a feature of the cyber area right that you've got a lot of people off doing their thing within the auspices of a big organization but really driving innovation so we see that as a big uh, a, a big inspiration as well yeah Mark, marco invented duct tape so i so i'm not able to ask that last question <laughs> i always have one more question then i invented it so out of necessity a dock marco. around the tape a, a tape around the dock or a dock around the tape i don't know one of the and I'm, and I'm the duck i'm the duck That's what I'm doing. <laughs> 
Well, um, I, I do have a question because you mentioned you've been you've been doing this for a while, and uh, yeah. and and I and I know by being doing coverage at you know the larger event, smaller event, um, that you know things have changed, especially in cybersecurity, from what it used to be the conversation 10, 15 years ago to what we do today. We put together oh. government. We it's a it's a it's a meeting point if it's done right, in my opinion, an event where where you connect different uh, different angles of society and, and you bring it together. Um, I would love your opinion to how do it, how have you seen this change throughout the year and, and what have you learned maybe and, and applied to making this event? Yeah, no, that's that's a great question. I think that uh, to your point, that um, perhaps the whole notion of cyber and cybersecurity, particularly, even a few years ago, was something sort of in the background for the technical crowd, for the you know the nerds, if you will, the people that work in IT would that would would warn you about um, phishing and other things and so forth. It was, it was, you know, which is all important, but it was seen very much as sort of a um, over there, sort of not part of mainstream life. And I think that what the last few years have shown. Um, mainly a lot of it from the, sadly, from the security angle, perhaps some of it, um, is that, you know, cyber is part of our everyday life. Certainly cyber security is. I mean, the, the number of instances now of um, security breaches, whether they be in hospitals or schools or obviously banks. Um, but people, can, I think what resonates much more with people is when, unfortunately, when it happens in a mainstream area like a hospital, or a school or so forth and, and, and ransoms and so forth. I think that's brought it much more into the public domain. And I think also there's an acceptance on the, the, the military level, if you will, that you know, cyber warfare, cyber activity, cyber security is very much part of, of what governments are working on every day right now. I mean, the major attacks and problems that we see and the collaboration on the positive, the positive spin on this, the collaboration that we see now between countries is immense and that's part of what we're fostering here as you say there are you know from all over the world and the last time we you know when we did cyber tech here in new york last time it was the the first time that the heads of cyber not not just from israel but from the uae from um you know morocco and other parts of the world had sat on the same stage together and talked about their common challenges and their, co their common hopes and so on so i think to answer your question marco i think that now Cyber, not just because of security, but because security is front and center, is much more of our, it's part of the mainstream of our life. It's part of our technology. It's, um, you know, it's, it's there, right, along with cell phones and laptops and connectivity and Wi-Fi. And it's just part of the conversation, I think, nowadays. Yeah. So that's, that's, I've got, I've got yeah. to be honest, sorry, because I want to add this. I, we always try to go global, bring everybody from all the part of the world, which is great. But sometimes I think that it's, it could be more effective when you focus on the community and the yeah. smaller community. So the fact that you're focusing on, on the New York City and, and that infrastructure and those companies that are in the area, I, I really like that because it could be many community that then amplify the message to a larger audience. So I. I think that's 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 a good thing. That's great. Yeah, that's that's a great observation. I appreciate you saying that because uh, we do want to augment New York, and it has a lot of initiatives at the city and the state level around cyber, and is at the forefront. So that's a great observation. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, and the speakers and the topics. Um, you know, I, I I went through it with a fine tooth comb and and put a few few categories of things that we hope to talk about leading up to the event to kind of share with folks what they can expect in terms of speakers and topics. Uh, so we're hoping to chat with a few people around policy. So yeah. who's studying it and how do we, how do we bring that into the business? Uh, secure innovation, you spoke to a lot, of, a lot of startups and a lot of smaller organizations, medium-sized organizations doing cool things to build products and programs that take us to the next level. Uh, clearly yeah. secure ops and AppSec uh, core to every, every security program this point and then the, the final one that that i'm hoping to bring together is around society and sustainability because um, yep. if we do this just for tomorrow 
um, we might miss the mark for next week or next decade, <laughs> next yeah. generation even perhaps. So I'm excited to have those conversations and, and uh, yeah, and hopefully maybe a, a closing chat with the, the team, you and others from the organization that, that pulled this together to kind of get a recap of what the conversations were like, um, which by the way, September 5th, 2024, Metropolitan Pavilion in Chelsea. It looks like it's going from uh, 9 in the morning to 7.30 if you choose to uh, do the happy cyber hour. Or cyber happy, happy cyber. There we go. That's what it's called. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and if you're fortunate enough to get a, an invite to the Thursday events on the 4th, uh, there's the Identity Think Tank and the Cyber Tech opening reception. So... I don't know how folks get those, but they can reach out to you, Steve, and uh, and if they're qualified, I guess uh, they can they can participate in those events as well. It, it sounds like a great great opportunity to connect with with folks with uh, shared interests in in this space from all over the world and all walks of life, uh, defining and and building and employing uh, technology and people to help us secure our our society. So. Thank you, Sean. I can't really add much to that. That's an excellent one. Thank you. I know. I couldn't have said that better myself. <laughs> me, me neither. Don't ask me to do it again. <laughs> do it again. Do it again now. Do it again. Well, this was fun. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. It's a new venture for us as well to, to, to cover this event. So um, best of luck for this. We're looking forward to many more conversation <clears throat> as we lead to this, which is not that, that far from now, but... Uh, no. You know, it, it's enough to nail a few interesting conversations. So we're looking forward to that. We invite everybody to stay tuned on, on location with Sean Martin and Marco Ciappelli, which is me. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll put links on this uh, podcast or if you're watching the video on YouTube to get to the website, learn more about CyberTech NYC. And uh, that's it. Thank you, Steve. Thank, thank you. Really appreciate it. Hope to see you or some of your your colleagues there. Yeah, absolutely. 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 Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Take Bye -bye. care. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Sean and Marco's On Location event coverage conversations. Please take a moment to give the show a good rating and leave a comment. Remember to share this podcast with your friends, family, and colleagues. Come back for more conversations and follow Sean Martin and Marco Ciappelli as they continue their journey toward redefining cybersecurity and society.